All right, you're welcome back. Now let's set the ball in motion. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. Uh, this is currently the situation in southern Cameroon. Now, recently, in a real diplomatic push of the Southern Cameroon case, the House of Commons hosted a prominent Southern Cameroon elites based in the UK. And what the British Parliament, uh, parliamentarians heard were shocking when they listened in silence to happenings in Southern Cameroon. Uh, to give us updates on the situation in Southern Cameroon, we have been, we have been joined right now by Julius Ayuk Tabe and Fidelis Ndeche. They are citizens of Southern Cameroon, resident here in Nigeria. We'd like to welcome you gentlemen in the studio. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very good morning to you, gentlemen. Thank you. I'll, I'll describe that as a historic move, one that is a very good one in identifying with the cause of the people of Southern Cameroon, speaking with the parliamentarians in the House of Commons in the UK. But let me just begin on this note. What is the situation of things right now in Southern Cameroon? Fidelis, uh, Julius, can I have you react to this? Okay, thank you once more for having us. And by the way, um, that meeting at the U UK Parliament is befitting because don't forget the British got us into this mess. So we're going to, that's for another discussion. Okay. But since the last time we were here, so much is happening on the diplomatic front. We have since got all the pressure groups because this issue did not start today. It did not start yesterday. Actually, there have been pressure groups calling for the restoration of the independent state of southern Cameroon for many, many years, for decades. So one of the things we realized as we, the pressure mounted in the last couple of months is that there have been a lot of groups, different factions, and all those leaders have realized that, as always, they have a common cause, a common enemy in the gov government of the Republic of Cameroon. And so they have all come together in what now has been termed the Southern Cameroons and Bazonia Consortium United Front. Okay. Every single pressure group of this struggle is part of that consortium. And so now, this is a very strong voice for the whole of the, the, the struggle. Mm -hmm. And they met and they came up with a, declara a declaration, after which we have already had one massive uh, protest march at the United Nations headquarters in New York. It was again attended by people from different factions. So now, instead of having MORISC, which is one of the movement for the restoration, or consortium, or the SCNC, different, different factions organizing their marches, now all marches are being mothered or supported by the SCACOF, as we call them, the Southern Cameroon and Bazonia Consortium United Front. And they are making a massive push together because we have now realized that our unity and our strength in this fight is not to be going in different directions. We have one common purpose, one, our eyes are all fixed on the price, and that's what we are heading to. And just to show you the support that this group is receiving, yesterday was Women's Day. Yes. In every uh, country, and typically in Cameroon, our women know how to celebrate. Yeah, but guess sure. what? I think I've seen that last year. Oh, yeah. Okay. One thing about Cameroon is that they are happy go lucky people. Mm -hmm. But what happened yesterday has sent the message to Yaoundé once more, like we did on the 11th of February yesterday, in the southern Cameroons, the women decided to stay at home. Because truly, what's there to celebrate? Their daughters have been raped. Their sons have been hijacked. As we speak now, we, I mean, women are being arrested from their homes and taken to Yaoundé. So the women said, well, there's no reason for us to celebrate. That's the degree to which this cause has gone into the hinterlands. And all our people are saying enough is enough. Now, do you think this Ambazonia that's been pulled as a conglomerate uh, that will push forth the agenda of the South, people of Southern Cameroon in, 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 in one direction will stand the test of time, knowing fully well that uh, a pressure group like uh, the Southern Cameroon, Cameroon's National Council, which is the SCNC, was uh, a bit, um, do I say, strangled uh, some, some months back, and uh, we don't see it in full capacity acting to speak as a voice or the people of Southern Cameroon. Do you think the Amba Ambazonia will do that? That's a, the more reason why we think this union is a strong force. Because even if the, some parts of some pressure groups were, a bit weak, were falling apart or feeling a little weak, now that they have all united, the strength has come back to all of them. So if, for example, Ambazonia wanted to organize a conference, they had only members of Ambazonia. Today, we have Actually, next weekend, we have a, the consortium is organizing a, 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 a big rally in is it Atlanta it, or no, Houston, 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 okay. Texas. Houston, Texas. And guess what? All the members of other pressure groups are going to support them. So this one voice is making things. Trust me, I'm sure the government of the Republic of Cameroon is not mm -hmm. sleeping. They know that mm -hmm. the heat is on. And that heat will not stop 
until we get what we are asking for. I want to tell you that we have reached a stage where even some of the lover boys of this movement, the people who have been like the heroes of this movement, if they wake up now and say something about federation, everybody is backing away from them. That's how much the government has pushed the people to all go in one direction. So the heat is on now in it Cameroon. Is. They have 100 degrees Celsius, isn't it? Yes, yes. Now, Fidel is uh, yes, official sir. witness uh, to this declaration done on the 26th day of February 2017, you know, consolidating the gains of the Karapot Revolution in southern Cameroon with additional written submissions from Molan Joel Litumbe mm -hmm. and Mr. Dennis Adam Kang, the sign it. Now, Judas talked about oneness, the unity of purpose. Everybody have come together to form a very strong cluster or Constance bond, you, 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 you know, yeah. United but Front. with all this and with what has happened in the, in, 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 in the UN, have you, has the Cameroon Authority responded in any way to this very uh, consolidation? Well, what we see and what we experience and what we believe is that the government has no intention of actually making, uh, uh, resolving the issue. Uh, the, pronoun the pronouncements from the different uh, government uh, actors is that there is really no Anglophone crisis, that there is no crisis in the Southern Cameroon. And that's what they painted to the world. That, that's what they painted, that's what they mm. painted to themselves as well. To themselves as well. That mm. this is the agitations of a few individuals and that if they can arrest those individuals, if they can incarcerate them, if they can maybe get rid of them, maybe the, 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 the problem will go away. And every action they have taken so far in terms of deploying uh, the military, uh, deploying the special forces, doing uh, nightly arrest of anybody who has spoken up, doing even people that carry newspapers. If you buy a newspaper that has any, any declaration in there about the Federation in Southern Cameroon, you get arrested. If they see, so their, their solution to the problem has been to arrest as many people as possible, to bring them in front of special military tribunals for declaring secession, and to threaten them with the death penalty. What we're even hearing now is that they're going after members in the diaspora. We've seen uh, special uh, uh, circulated notices that uh, the security forces should do everything humanly possible to silence opposition members who are speaking in the diaspora. Uh, but if the government of Cameroon is saying that there is no agitation for succession, that Cameroon is in peace, and uh, uh, doesn't the world know about the shutting down of internet and electricity? Is this not enough reasons or evidence to show that uh, there is an issue going on in yeah. Cameroon? 51 days. It's 50, actually, it's actually 52 days since the internet was cut off in southern Cameroon. There are nine journalists that have been detained and that have been put in maximum security. So they're doing everything humanly possible to silence the, 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 any information coming out from that region. And I think we believe that there's complicity in certain parts, especially of the United Nations, to try and make sure this information does not get out. But I think that is the role that uh, Cameroonians in the diaspora have to play to ensure that you know the people so many people that have been disappeared so many people that have been killed so many people that have been tortured so many people that have been uh, injured and maimed that their, their efforts do not go in vain and what we're doing now essentially is try and help the people who are back home who have to suffer through this repression who have to suffer through militarization of their streets who have to suffer through nightly raids and kidnappings by the government to ensure that the message goes out as quickly and as soon as possible. Okay, now let me have you, Julia, still react to this issue from the scaffold declaration, and that seems to be the new arrangement that we are having popping out from the southern Cameroon, and the emphasis is to pay allegiance to the Ambazonia, which seems to be the common front or the consortium upon which so people of Southern Cameroon is going to speak as one voice. Now, you, you, you have in offices in Europe, South Africa, Nigeria, the United States of America, Asia, and other areas as need may arise. Meantime, the various committee and organs of the Secretariat shall be manned in the days ahead. We hope to see that happening anytime soon. soon. But let's just, let me get your take on this. Establishing offices outside uh, Cameroon right about now, what's the intention? Okay, we have to establish offices. We have to co coordinate the efforts of everybody. Unfortunately, we can't do that in Cameroon. The government has displayed in no mean way that they are, the degree to which they can go to quell this. 
So what we are doing is we've set up a secretariat and then we are going to have offices. As a matter of fact, as we speak, offices are being set up. Okay. We have uh, already consulted and we are recruiting an international law firm, which is going to not only dig out all our petitions that have received success at the United Nations, they will come to Abuja and pick out our declaration at the Abuja High Court. But in addition to that, they are actually going to now formally um, establish cases against crimes against humanity for not only the Republic of Cameroon, but individuals, starting with the President of the Republic. Mm -hmm. So we are going to make uh, start pro, uh, cases against those people, and we know that with the secretariats at the different places, this, those uh, countries you mentioned, and of course we, in, we have lots of lawyers in most of those secretariats. Uh, and now, if you're going to try to make case against the government of Cameroon, yes. of course, uh, that all Southern Cameroonians, talking about the Ambazonians mm -hmm. now, you know, both at home and abroad shall be mobilized to contribute materially, financially, and otherwise to facilitate the decolonization process. Yes. So I, I, have you uh, come to terms with the fact that, okay, it's high time uh, Cameroon should be, or Southern Cameroon should be decolonized? Yes, we are, we are certain of one thing. The Republic of Southern Cameroon, or we call it Ambazonia, it's a question of when we become our own state, rather than if we become our own state. But, but sorry, it, can I come in here, Julius? Yeah. Would this incidentally become a bath name for the nation if it does emerge as an independent state? When it does emerge as an independent state, we'll call it the Republic of Ambazonia. Okay. Now, I'll tell you what. In 19, when the United Nations voted, we have now got declassified information that shows that of the 59 and 4, that is uh, 60... 63 nations that voted the United Nations Assembly, 50 voted in favor of Southern Cameroon becoming a, a sovereign state. Four abstentions and nine, uh, four against and nine abstentions. Yeah. Even Nigeria this document, voted. Okay. This document is now available. Recently declassified information at the uh, uh, UK. A lot of things are happening. I mean, Fidelis and I were joking on our way here that the more we are knowing what happened to Southern Cameroon, the more we feel personally ashamed. I am disappointed at myself that it is only now that I'm knowing the things I should have known then. And trust me, if you know, that if you know now the things we, the thing, if we knew then what we know now, this thing would have happened since. Mm -hmm. The truth is, all the history is in our favor. We were supposed to be an independent state. Now, the British in their own corrupted wisdom thought that we were unsustainable. How can we be unsustainable when we have been sustaining this nation of uh, the Republic of Cameroon since independence? How can you say we are too small when we are bigger than 24 nations in Africa? How can you say we are too small when we are bigger than 70 nations on planet Earth? We are not too small. We are not inviable. We have enough resources to sustain us. We have enough people to sustain this country. As I keep saying, we have to come back to Nigeria and ECOWAS. It is in the interest of the Republic of Nigeria, forgetting its own personal problems within the, this country, it's increasingly becoming more urgent for Nigeria to turn its eye and, and attend to this Cameroon problem. Because as we say, there are six million registered Nigerians in Cameroon. This country cannot but, and but, should but not it, have to face an exodus or an intake of four, five, ten million people. But do you think Nigeria would want to pay attention to these details, looking at uh, history where Nigeria had to battle with Cameroon over what is known as the Bakasi, Bakasi Peninsula? Peninsula? Bakasi only went to Cameroon because of southern Cameroons. Bakasi would never have gone to... The Republic of Cameroon has no boundary with Nigeria, to, with Bakasi, with, uh, without with Bakasi. The Bakasi is only part of, the, of this so-called Cameroon today because of Southern Cameroons. By the way, when the United Nations visited Cameroon in the 50th anniversary celebrations in Cameroon, they went to Cameroon with two framed maps, one of the Republic of Cameroon and one of the Southern Cameroons. This is, we have video footage of that, the United Nations representative handing that to the mm -hmm. government, the, gov the president, probably in the 50th, anniversary, 50th anniversary celebrations. Now, at that time, just like we've been saying, up until last December or November, all of us were on the side that, well, the more the merrier. But the more we are studying the history, it teaches us lessons. We shouldn't be in this marriage. So l let me get to Fidelis now. If there are lessons that have been learned now from histories that you see, why were this history hidden from from you up not until now you, you it's emerging you're seeing them now uh coming to light and um the discovery is made known and you're like if we had known mm. what happened what was the missing link well i think it's a certain level of naivety on the part of 
first and foremost, our leaders in uh, Southern Cameroon, our former leaders, and maybe a certain level of cleverness, not by the uh, Cameroon government per se, but by their colonial masters. So France. you feel it's deliberate? Yes, we feel that it, it too, it's too pronged. One, it's, you know, the, the French government and the French administration has always been colonial in its approach. I do not believe they've ever left their colonies. No single French uh, colony is really considered truly independent. And that's, by the way, policy of assimilation. Yeah, exactly. That's the policy of assimilation. And if you look at the colonial agreement that they signed with all of these countries, so the more territories they can add to that, the better. We even have uh, uh, part of the declassified information that says that, you know, the Southern, British Southern Cameroon is considered as a little gift from the British government, from the two... That's what the Gaulle said to Yeah, Charles de Gaulle said. Yeah, yeah, that British Southern Cameroon is a little gift from the British government to the government of France. Uh, uh, That's right. how they see us. Uh, 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 Julius, I'd like you to point out this one right after this time out. That the resemblance democratic do uh, people uh, rassemblement democratic du peuple democratic du peuple. Uh, 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 immediate effect. effect. That is the prescri uh, prescription. prescription and that is how uh, the Southern Cameroon have said it. Now we'll come back and then we'll look at this very uh, RDPC or uh, CPDM, mm -hmm. you know, as what uh, uh, the view of Southern Cameroon towards this Great. very group. Okay. All right, viewers, if you don't join us, you're watching Sci Fi Breakfast Show. At this point, we'll take a short break now and return with more on this discussion with Fidelis and Deje and Julius Ayukta, based citizens of Cameroon, based in Nigeria. Just stay with us. Welcome back now. If you've just tuned in, this is Safia Breakfast Show. And um, let's quickly throw this open to you on our Social Connect platform. If you want to react to what is going on in Southern Cameroon, you can visit our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash Safia on TV Gota. would definitely love to hear from you. If you have questions to ask, please drop your questions on that platform. Right about now, we are looking at the situation in Southern Cameroon. And our guests are Julius Ayuk Tabe and um, Fidel is in the J. Both are citizens of Cameroon Republic resident here in Nigeria. Now, just before the timeout, uh, Chris uh, brought up an issue that proscribed uh, the RP, uh, R RDPC as, or the RP, R the sorry, RDPC yeah. the or CPDM. Mm -hmm. yes. Let's put it that way. As a terrorist um, uh, and money laundering organization sponsored by the Cameroon Republic, uh, within and with an immediate effect. I, I don't know. I, I think I am a bit curious here. Why should uh, an institution like this that has been in existence be, 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 be prescribed as a terrorist institution? Okay. This group is actually the political party. It's, it was the only political party in Cameroon. When they decided to unify the country, the country it was the CNU at the time, Cameroon National Union. Now, this one is actually, you read it, the French version is why you read with Arrow, the CPDM, Cameroon mm -hmm. People's Democratic, Democratic Movement. Mm -hmm. Now, we proscribe them because we, these are the members, they're supposed to be members of parliament who are not representing their people. As we speak, you cannot have these same people watching for the last how many weeks, a couple of months, 
Watch their daughters being raped. Watch their children being tortured, killed. None of them has stood up to say anything. As we speak, the prime minister and head of government, who's a member of this party, has come up and he's been moving from pillar to post, trying to encourage people to send their children to school, irrespective of the fact that none of those schools has opened since, and irrespective of the fact that in this same year, he can, we are already looking at over a thousand people who have been arrested and tortured. Would we say so, his ignorance of what's happening in Cameroon? He cannot in be Southern. ignorant. I mean, it, this is the third time he's come to uh, the Southern Cameroons, and third time he has been abandoned to, his, to himself. So you cannot be a leader of a people and you ignore their plight. How can you come? And I tell you, why they are insisting about schools reopening is because that's one of our trump cards as we speak now. Because if the schools don't reopen, UNESCO would eventually, yeah. no matter how they delay it, UNESCO would eventually cancel the school year for all of Cameroon. So they are feeling the pressure. But even on that, in this situation where they are under pressure, they can still not see the logic of sitting down to negotiate. With but people. Julius, is the odd favoring people of Southern Cameroon right now? I don't know about us, but I'm saying that where we stand is that if we hold on, and we are holding on because our people back home, in spite of all the pressure, they've decided that they are not sending their children to school. And if we keep that on, the truth is the school year will be cancelled. Okay, so Fidelis wants to react there. Well, this time, I don't think we should be talking about odds. We should talk about the facts, and we should talk about the law. You know, the facts support the, uh, the, our case for an independent nation that can, uh, that can self-determine. The law, especially the United Nations law, also support the, the case for independent Southern Cameroons. The evidence on the ground shows that the Republic of Cameroon has never considered Southern Cameroons as part of its territory. And they've done everything humanly possible in the past 56 years to a, a, eviscerate all the resources of the territory, to destroy all its industries, to marginalize the people of that territory. That's why if you look at it, Almost any Southern Cameroon of note is out of the country working because you cannot get a job in Southern Cameroon. As, uh, as a Southern uh, as, yes. Cameroon. But, but the Southern unification Cameroon. policy uh, in, in Cameroon now plays both uh, and the Anglophones and the Francophones as one people, as an entity, isn't it? Let me tell you, we were coming and we watched an advert by the National Carrier, the, uh, uh, the National Cameroon Airline Airlines. in Cameroon. They do 70 flights a week within Cameroon. And guess what? They have six air airports in Cameroon, none of them in southern Cameroon. Six, mm -hmm. as none we speak. in southern Cameroon. None of those airports is in southern Cameroon. Now, how do you consider yourself a part of a country that has a national carrier moves 70 flights in a week mm -hmm. and none of them goes to your region? Uh, uh, you that, consider that's yourself a part of a country? What, what Aaron asked earlier on, you know, how come all this history, Lena, has been mm -hmm. concealed Without your knowing that's that. why we are saying if, that if you had known this before now, exactly, then all this wouldn't have happened. We are not only mm. disappointed ourselves. I'm ashamed of myself. No, 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 I'm sitting here today, no, so many be, years no, later, to realize that we have mm. been cheated for so long. Mm. But we thank God that we are weak. Don't be ashamed, Julia. You know, uh, uh, Fidelis, let's go back to history a little bit now. We know that we had the uh, National Council of uh, Nigeria and Cameroons. If that arrangement would have sufficed to exist as an entity, a movement that would have stay, uh, span a long time and um, gradually emerge as a nation, independent nation state of itself. Do you think that would have been the best option for this cry that we are pushing for today? Well, you know, the hindsight, as we say, is better than 2020. Looking back at the situation, it's clearly obvious that, you know, from a language perspective, from a cultural perspective, you know, the, what defines a people, the language they speak, the laws they follow. Mm -hmm. Southern Cameroon is completely different from the Republic of Cameroon. They follow the civil law system, we follow the common law. The, the system of education is, disc is actually pres uh, prescribed in France. We have a completely separate and independent system of education, the language we speak. So if we had stayed with the Southern, uh, the, the Nigeria. Southern no, Nigeria National exactly. Council, I think eventually that would have been a much better path. But obviously the decision was never left to Southern Cameroonians. So, so, so basically and, and we would be right to say that what is happening right about now is an accident of creation. Let me tell you, it was, it was impossible for us to go back to, uh, to Nigeria. Because, don't forget, in 1954, they had broken out of the Enugu House of uh, Chiefs. Chiefs, Chiefs. They had broken out. That was already a divorce in itself. So when they left, and then seven years later, you came and gave them a choice. 
go back to that house that was on fire that you left or go to so it was caught we were caught between the rock and the hot plate and we decided well as they say the devil you know sometimes is better than the angel, angel you don't, you don't know. know we said no we know this devil would rather go to the angel who turned out not to be worse if i mean if we went we came back to nigeria as we said there are some commonalities number one we speak the same language number two we have the same law number three we have a lot of cultural similarities right. but we move mm -hmm. into a marriage that is tomorrow has turned out to be a one-sided a lopsided marriage for which we regret and the only thing that stands between mm. us now and our success and our future is a divorce now, now Julius, even the Bakasi peninsula of course uh, those who resident there now are beginning to also express their displeasure of being regarded as southern cameroonian they want to return you know as nigerians no, now do you also think that we are southern cameroon they are regretting Niger being part of cameroon yeah and why is that because when they moved them of course their decision was not part of it they didn't go to any referendum to move they were moved as a people yeah. but if you go back to bakasina and us and look at the infrastructure we would like to encourage the nigerian media do your investigative journalism. You guys go no, we'll shine see, the light. We we'll see the government Bacassi. of um, of um, the Cross River State trying to pay attention to the people of um, Bakasi Peninsula exactly. by providing them with some level of kind of, uh, kind of assistance Should they based the on their plight. So? That's exactly the point we're making. Should they be the ones to do so? If these people had moved and gone to a country that cared or that cares, this country should take care of them. Bakasi came with a lot of resources. How can you now justify how many years later? If you go to Bakasi, I bet you there are very little to show that they moved. Oh, okay, flight. let's get back to uh, some other issues now. Looking at the, the, the situation in Southern Cameroon, one would say you have a government which is popularly known as uh, the La Cameroon Republic that is uh, very docile, not really active in, in, in speaking out with regards to what is going on. Not much is coming out from the state media concerning what is really happening. Is it that the government has decided to step aside and allow these things to go on the ground and say nothing about it. Or we have a government that is actually trying to say, okay, let me extend a hand to you, the people of Southern Cameroon. Embrace it, let's come for a roundtable dialogue. Well, we have not seen any evidence that the government is actually interested in dialogue. Mm. And what we've seen so far is the fact that those who the government tried to engage in dialogue before were all banned arrested and they're serving in prisons now. Mm -hmm. So even if the government were to call for dialogue, it's hard to imagine anybody wanting to step forward for dialogue unless first they release all the people that they have arrested. And I think that's the first thing they have to do. And secondly, it's meant to be a democratic country, which means that you know dissent should be allowed. If somebody has, you know, people, before we, uh, Southern Cameroon became part of the Republic of Cameroon, there was a referendum. We should never forget that. Yeah. And during that referendum, there were people that held views for independence. They never went to jail. There were people that held the views that they should come, uh, Southern <coughs> Cameroon should remain part of Nigeria. 40% of the people, they never went to jail. There were some people that voted, obviously, to stay with the, to join the Republic of Cameroon. So 60%. 60%. So you should not have a, a country where dissent is repressed, where people that hold different mm. opinions are sent to jail. And you cannot have a dialogue under such circumstances. Uh, uh, all right. And by the way, sorry, uh, uh, on we will not have that know? dialogue. Sorry, we will mm. not have that dialogue without a credible intermediary. Yes, incredible, incredible, incredible intermediary. Credible intermediary. Ideally, from ECOWAS, from European African Union and the European Union. Of course, you must have on that table the people, the British, as I keep saying, they got us into this mess. They really have to get us out of it. So basically, for a dialogue to be called a dialogue, you must have the presence of the colonial masters there, British and, uh, British and France. We really don't need, we don't need France. France. We don't need France. Uh, but they, they, they are the architect, uh, architecture well, for... We can only meet them when we start looking at reparation, because mm -hmm. they have duped us for the last 56 years. So what's the opp oppression and suppression aimed at achieving by uh, the, the government of the day in, in, in Cameroon right now? Well, I think the government believes that they would play this wait and see game. Mm -hmm. And that like anybody, you would protest until you, your resolve would die. But they, are, they must be asking themselves, it's 52 days without internet. And the people can still wake up and say on the 8th of March, we are not going to join the Women's Day. The next thing would be, if they keep this, and we don't know whether they'll keep it, but if they keep it until the 20th of May, we are still going to do the same. That's why I'm surprised that nobody in the administration can see the government at the early days of this strike, the president signed a decree creating a, something for bi, multi, bi, what was bi, that? Bilingualism. bilingualism and multiculturalism. It has died a natural death. That is how things happen in Cameroon. He would wake up and sign something 
He signed decentralization 20 years ago, 21 to be precise, 1996. Uh, Julius, now let me, let, let me just have you react okay. to this in 10 seconds each. Mm -hmm. yeah. For how long do you intend to push on this fight? Julius, let me begin with you. 10 seconds, please. For as long as it takes until we will have our statehood. Fidelis, what's your take on this? Right now, there are petitions at the White House calling uh, for the White House, first and foremost, to actually intervene to ban members of the Cameroon government who have been involved in uh, repression and torture. There are petitions to actually put a protected status on Southern Cameroons. I believe that the population of Southern Cameroons, every individual of Southern Cameroons in the diaspora has everything at stake. Right now, none of us can return back to Cameroon. Many Southern Cameroonians who are in the diaspora who have tried to go back to Cameroon have either been arrested and jailed or they have been deported. Back to the to the country okay. they're coming so, from. So, so for now, Nigeria is a home for you guys. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to wish yeah. the, the people of Southern Cameroon and the consortium that has been put together, Southern Cameroon and Bazonia Consortium United Front, popular, uh, popularly known as SCAFU. 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 Okay, SCAFU. Thank you very much, and then we wish you well. Yeah. Thank and, you. And um, please, um, peace is the best word we can always preach out. Yeah. Let's do everything in, 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 with decorum and in and line with the laws. And this, we have still been very peaceful. Our people are with our hands up every time and they are being beaten and killed. Uh, but we thank God. Protests. The Lord yes. will see yes. us through. Yes, okay. I like that. Optimism thank you case. very much, Julius. Thank and you thank you very much, Fidelis, for being well, on the program today. Well, there has been Julius Ayuk Tabe and Fidelis Ndeche, both citizens of Cameroon based here in Nigeria, and have provided updates on the crisis in southern Cameroon.